gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time once again for The Johnny Mandolin Show, broadcasting live on City World Radio Network. Uh, tonight we have a wonderful, funny comedian who's been a frequent guest on my show and uh, is going to tell you all about what he's working on. That's Mr. Mike Marino, the Italian-American comedian tearing up the United States. And he's going to tell you about how to make America Italian again. So uh, we'll be hearing from Mike today on the show. We're going to have a really good time, so stick around. Don't touch that mouse. We're broadcasting live on City World Radio Network. It's the Johnny Mandolin Show. Well, I've been gone in Southern California for a while. I was out there, um, you know, doing stuff. And uh, uh, I was actually producing some shows out there as well. And um, it was it was really fun. Um, I got to uh, see lots of friends. And I want to say hi to some of my friends out there, including uh, Phil Gonzalez, a longtime listener, and uh, Lori and Anthony and Tina out in California. And uh, lots of the gang out there. We have a lot of listeners out there. And uh, also, um, like I said, I got to produce some shows out there. I got to enjoy some nice weather. It was about 75 and sunny every day. And that was very nice. Uh, But it's so good to be back to New York. You know, I come back to New York. And the first two things I have to do is have a slice of pizza and a hot dog. Because I can't seem to get either one out there (laughs) worth anything. So um, no offense to my California friends, but New York pizza is New York pizza. And uh, it was really Really great time out there. I did get some unbelievably good Mexican food. Um, And it's not in the real fancy places. You don't go to the real high-end fancy places. You can go to your your local little hole-in-the-wall taco stand and get the the greatest food uh, at great prices. So it was really enjoyable. Um, Really, really good. So um, we're going to have Mike come on in a little bit. Um, We also have... um, One of our uh, good friends from um, Sexton Records, and that's Jack Wood, has a new CD out. We're going to have him on. This should be Mike. Let's see. Hey, Mike. Hey, hey. How you doing? Good. You're on the air. How are you, Mike? Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for letting me come on the show, buddy. Oh, we love it. We love having you on. I was just telling our audience you'd be coming on and and a little bit about you and uh, Make America Italian Again. (laughs) I love that. That's great. So, Mike, what have you been up to? Well, luckily enough, and I apologize for not being able to come into the studio tonight, but I have been running around like crazy because we're doing a lot of publicity for this big event that I'm going to do at the uh, Count Basie in Red Bank, New Jersey, on May 25. Now, this is one of the most prestigious theaters in the state of New Jersey. It's 1,500 seats. And I'm very excited to have been invited to play there. So, you know, you run around and you get on as many talk shows as you can, like yours. And yesterday, 
and uh, you're the first person to hear this, but I got cast in a TV series, well, the pilot of what would be a TV series called Silent Partners, and I'm finally playing a mobster. (laughs) (laughs) At long last. You always play a cop. (laughs) Yes, that's right. All my life I wanted to play a hitman or a wise guy or a mobster, and I've done a lot of movies like that, but because I have the blonde hair and the blue eyes, I was always an Irish cop. <laughs> well, this time I got, I'm got i playing an underboss to a crime family that really existed. Wow. That sounds really interesting. And this is a pilot for what will be a TV show, a series? Well, like everything else, you hope it gets picked up. Sure. But if it became the... The new Sopranos, I'd be right in the thick of things. That'd be great, Mike. Well, you've worked awfully hard to get to this level. I know that you've uh, worked every comedy club around, and you've been on comedy television and, uh, you know, talking to people, talking to sponsors, building your career, and you've done an excellent job of it. Speaking of sponsors, I'm really hoping that we're going to get this one that we went out to today. I can't mention it until they give us the green light. Sure. But I am happy and lucky to say that I am sponsored by Lucatelli Cheese. <laughs> oh, wonderful. That's great. I love Lucatelli Cheese. Everybody grew up on it. Right. You see it in all the grocery stores throughout the world. And uh, now they're on my shoulders. I got them on my shirts. I got them on my banners. I got them at the, the, the place. And it's just really, really great. So... All right, everybody, go get some cheese. Cut the cheese at Lucatelli. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so great, Mike. And um, I know that um, uh, your um, your big event coming up, uh, is, that's in Red Bank. Isn't that right, Red Bank, New Jersey? <clears throat> Red Bank, New Jersey, it's kind of a good ways down towards the Jersey Shore. A very popular, famous town. Obviously, Count Basie lived there. They named the theater after him. And this would be like playing, let's say, Asbury Park, only in the Count Basie area. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. I think that's going to be wonderful. Well, um, actually, Mike, while you're here with us, we have an MP3 that we're going to play. um, And it's your, uh, you're talking to your lawyer about this very event. We're going to broadcast that on the air right now. (laughs) So stand stand by, because this is Mike uh, Marino. And tell us about your lawyer uh, friend, what's his name? Oh, that's New Jersey's funniest lawyer, John Bramnick, and he and I created these commercials, so enjoy. All right. Here we go. Your Honor, may it please the Court, John Bramnick, funniest lawyer in New Jersey, on behalf of my client, Michael Marino. I call Michael Marino to the stand. Mr. Marino, uh, will you please place your left hand on the book? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Do you swear this to tell isn't the whole a truth? Bible? The truth you have got? We'll use it for today's purposes, sir. Please tell the members of the jury what your profession is. I am a stand up comedian. And how long have you been a stand up comedian, sir? I've been a stand up comedian for 23 years. Is it true, sir, that at some point in the past or presently, You've said you're trying to make America Italian again. Is that true, sir? Well, I mean, it's the title of a, a comedy album, you know, Make America Italian Again. How do you go about making people Italian, sir? If you want to be Italian, you've got to eat all the Italian food. You've got to have pizza, you've got to have macaroni, ravioli, supersa, galama, and uh, gabagool. Gabagool? How do you spell that? Gab. G-A-B. A ghoul. <laughs> How long have you been Italian, sir? I've been Italian since way back since I can remember. I think I was born Italian. How do you know you're Italian? Well, I'm 55 years old and I still live at home with my mom. That's pretty much Italian as can be, you know? And I eat pasta every Sunday. I want to direct your attention to May 25th, 2019. Does that date ring a bell, sir? Yes, I will be in Red Bank, New Jersey, performing at the Count Basie Theater. And what's your intention on May 25th, 2019? What do you intend to do at the Count Basie Theater, sir? I intend to kill them, make them laugh, harder than they've ever laughed in their entire life. Tell the members of the jury who's going to be your opening act on May 25th, 2019 in Red Bank. Well, I believe the opening act is going to be a gentleman they call New Jersey's funniest lawyer, John Bramnick, you. Thank you. No further questions, Mr. Marino. Your Honor, I would now ask for a ruling from this court, specifically from the jury on their findings, after we've had the testimony of Mr. Marino. How does the jury rule? 
Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Marino. I rest my case. Yeah, that's Mike Marino. Mike, that was wonderful. Thank you, man. I thought that would be a little bit of a uh, humoristic look at uh, the courtroom drama. No, oh, that's great. You played it well, and uh, it was a great, great bit, great commercial, and um, and uh, that's that's good news. And I'm sure for the the people uh, on the East Coast, uh, this is so worth going to. I had the pleasure of seeing Mike live at Caroline's in New York, and uh, he, uh, you you just tore it up. And at the New Jersey Pack, I saw you there too. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And I plan on tearing it up again. Now, we got a lot of new material that I'm going to be dropping. I actually spent some time yesterday in Costco researching some new jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, we love Do you me. know you could buy a piano at Costco? Really? That's not even the joke. I'm just saying. No, I didn't You know could that. buy a coffin. I mean, you could buy a coffin, of course, but you could buy a piano. And I went in there to buy some grass seed. And right next to grass seed was a piano and lawn furniture. I'm like, how is this not going to be a joke? <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah, I can't wait to say to my friends, where are you going tonight? Well, I'm going to Costco. I have a piano lesson. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. As soon as the, gun, the guy's done making hot dogs, he's going to teach me how to play. <laughs> That's too much. Uh, and that's, what's so great is you'll notice stuff like that. That's what's really fun. Oh, uh, uh, I think it's one of the wonders of the world. I actually have so much fun going into places like Walmart and uh, Costco and, and all these big stores because, to me, it's like an adventure. You meet crazy, whacked-out people from around the world, and everybody's fighting to get a, a bargain. And you know what's really crazy, too, is I'm single. I have no business being in this place. I can't really buy anything in bulk. It's a waste of money. Yeah. So if I was to buy a, you know, a garbage can size thing of popcorn, by the time I'm done, it's all going to be stale. <laughs> I know what you mean. <clears throat> well, I live in a New York apartment, so 48 rolls of toilet paper doesn't mean no good. You know? No, you'd have to have that many for the entire building, and then you'd still have some left over. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, we actually have some clips here of you I think we're going to play. Um, Jade, what's our first clip? <laughs> Uncle Tommy. Uh, tell, <laughs> briefly, tell us about Uncle Tommy. Well, you know, Uncle Tommy was a great force, force in my life. This was a, the uncle that married my mom's sister, Aunt Mary. And he was one of those old school guys from Italy that everything that came out of his mouth was funny to me. He was like a cross between Archie Bunker and Lieutenant Columbo. He had that raspy voice, and uh, you, you just wanted to be around him. He was a kind soul, but he said the silliest things. I'll never forget one time I told him I was moving to California to become an actor. And he said, they don't have good movies anymore. In my day... They made great movies. Like my favorite movie of all time was called Gone with the Storm. <laughs> it was about a house that was swept away by a hurricane and crash landed on a witch, and it killed her. So the prince had to find her, and when he found her, the, the, the shoe didn't fit. So that's why they were in the parking lot at the bus, and he said, frankly, my dear Stella, I could care less. <laughs> That's that's great. That's a great story. <laughs> and then you, you looked at him like, what are you talking about? But he meant that. And that's what got me into stand-up comedy. I used to impersonate him. Well, that that is that is so classic, and I think we all had kind of an Uncle Tommy or an Aunt Tommy in our Italian yeah. families. I know yeah. I did. Uh, here's a clip of uh, Uncle Tommy telling us about G.I. Um, Giovanni, I think. Sure, G.I. Joe, the original G.I. Joe doll was G.I. Giovanni. There we go. Here, here it comes. Uh, hey, everybody. How you doing? This is your Uncle Tommy. When I was a kid, we used to play with the G.I. Joe dolls. A lot of people thought that the G.I. Joe doll was a soldier in the army. We didn't play him that way. We made him a mob boss. We called him G.I. Giovanni. G.I. Giovanni was badass. All of them. They had the Kung Fu grip down by the balls. And they had the lifelike hair. Remember the lifelike hair? It was on the head. But G.I. Giovanni had it on his back, too, because he was Italian. He had a girlfriend on his side. Maybe you remember his girlfriend. 
an Italian we called it a Gumara. Yeah, a Gumara. That's right, Bobby, Bobby Doll. G.I. Giovanni was tapping that ass. He tapped that ass. I don't know how he did it, because they don't have peepees. He was trouble, Bobby Doll. Told everybody that she was a model from Malibu, but that was a lie. She was a stripper from Seaside, New Jersey, you understand? She worked at the Dream House, and it was owned by her, her man at the time there. His name was, uh, that was his name, uh, Ken. But G.I. Giovanni had to straighten Ken out. You know what I'm talking about? He had to straighten him out. But if you remember correctly, you really can't straighten out Ken, because he was, uh... uh G.I. Giovanni and Bobby Doll used to go out to dinner all the time. They went to a very nice place back in the day. It was called the, uh, what the f was it called? The, uh, the Easy Bake Oven. And all of a sudden... Bobby Doll started crying. She started crying. She looked at G.I. Giovanni, you know, with those painted, painted still eyes. And she said, G.I. Giovanni, I can't find Ken anywhere. And G.I. Giovanni looked at Bobby Doll and said, Oh yeah, Ken, you wanna go find him no more. She said, Well, where do you think he is? He said, I think Stretch Armstrong took him for a ride. He probably ain't nothing but silly putty now. That's the way you played with the G.I. Joe doll back in the day. They were mobsters. But you didn't hear that from me, and I'm your Uncle Tommy. Now get the hell out of here. That's so great, Mike. <laughs> That's really uh, funny. Thanks for playing that. Oh, that was great. Well, I, our audience loves that, and uh, it's so nice, you know, when I get emails and, and uh, comments from... Um, from you know you about you, I always love to hear that that they're asking for Uncle Tommy. So you you have a, quite a character there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, you know, I miss that guy, and I really wish he was around. But uh, I'll keep his life light burning by imitating him. That's great. I think that's wonderful. Um, so you've got a lot going on. You've got your big show in Red Bank. You've got uh, a movie or a TV pilot. Um, and uh, you're jumping around the world. Every time I hear you're in Florida, New York, or, or, or California doing a show, uh, what, what's what's on the long-range plan here? What else are you doing? I'm here in New Jersey for the next couple of days doing publicity for the Red Bank show. Friday, I'm leaving for Cuba. I'm going to jump on a cruise ship to entertain for a week. Wow. That ship actually will pull into Miami on Ma Saturday the 18th, Saturday, May 18th. And then I'm going to just stay there for three to four days working on that TV movie. Wow, that just sounds wonderful. Yeah, and then I'll fly back here to New Jersey on, let's say, May 23, and I'll do a couple of days of more publicity, more radio, more TV, and then May 25, we hit the uh, show at uh, the theater. And then May 26, 27, I sleep all day. <laughs> <laughs> You're well-deserved. And then May 27, I fly back to Los Angeles for one week to do a bunch of shows. And then on June 5, I'm actually hosting the East Coast Music Hall of Fame in Wildwood, the Wildwood Convention Center. Wow. That's something to put in your hat because that's all musicians. I'm the only comedian, and I really won't be doing much comedy because I'm the host of the show. So it would be like going to the Oscars for a lot of musical pioneers from back in the day, a lot of doo-wops. I know Connie Francis is going to be honored. Um, there's going to be, like, the Duprees there wow. and Dion, um, Dina Martin, Sal Valentinetti. Uh, I can't think of just about everybody, but... Um, Bobby Rydell, Frankie Avalon, maybe even Frankie Valley, And they'll all be sitting in a 3,000-seat auditorium watching me uh, <laughs> run the show. That's wonderful. Well, I'm glad that these opportunities are coming your way because um, you're a talented comedian, but you're also a very talented actor and writer. And uh, there's a lot of stuff you're doing, and now a host. So <laughs> that's great. That's a hard job. <laughs> I tell a lot of people the master of ceremonies is actually the most difficult job, and even in a comedy show, because they have to corral people, make people sit still and watch the show. I don't know why they have difficulty finding somebody like this during the Oscars, because I know I would do it. Mm -hmm. 
I won't offend anybody, and I'll keep it clean. <laughs> yeah. Well, Bring back the day of when, when Bob Hope hosted the Oscars with class. Yeah, he was great. I love yep. those old Bob Hope movies. <laughs> right? They were great, yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. And um, um, I think opportunities like this will be coming your way more and more because as people see both <laughs> your, your talent and your poise on stage, um, your, your ability to command an audience, I think that's a really good sign. And I think that that's going to lead to great, great success for you. Well, hey, from your lips to God's ears is what my mother used to say. So let's do. hope, 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 because I love doing what I do. And I love being on stage, and I actually love making people happy. Hey, you want to hear something cool? Yeah. Uh, I guess it was about a week ago, a 16-year-old boy wrote to me on Facebook, and he said he'd really like tickets to the Count Basie. And I said to him, well, there's no alcohol being served, and this is a theater, so you can be any age, really, to come and see this show. Uh, you know, a comedy club, you got to be maybe 21 or 19 and above because they serve alcohol. But here they only serve, I believe, popcorn and candy, and it's a big theater. Yeah. So I said, yes, you can come. And the kid said, I specifically need to sit in the front. And I said, well, all the VIP seats have been taken, but why do you need to sit in the front anyway? And he said, because I'm deaf wow. and I'm going to be reading your lips. Wow. And I just said, you know what? Don't you worry about it. I'll get you some seats. And if you need to bring somebody to sign the show, I can make that happen. But what an unbelievable compliment that this kid is watching me on YouTube. And he's listening to the, the uh, he's watching my lips. And is also, you know, when you do a show and they have the subtitles at the bottom. So that's how he caught wind of who I am. That's great. And I just said, okay, let me take care of this for you because... You know, you get agents and managers who pass on you. They don't believe in you. Then you get a 16-year-old kid saying, I can't wait to see the show, and I can't even hear you. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. What a great story, and what a great, it? what a great thing you're doing for him, too. Yeah. Well, you know, we got to give back somehow. That's it. I totally agree. Well, Mike, um, uh, let's uh, uh, give one more time your uh, information uh, at the upcoming show. The next up-and-coming show on this tour, which is Make America Italian Again, is May 25 at the Count Basie in Red Bank, New Jersey. Showtime is 8 o'clock. Anybody can get tickets at thebasie.org. All right. Mike? And, of course, my website is mikemarino.net, and all my social media is at Mike Marino Live. Well, I was just going to give your website, but I'm glad you did because, um, <laughs> folks, you have to check this out. Um, he has a great website. There's so many great uh, comedy sketches and information there. In fact, that's where we got the, <coughs> that's where we got the ones we played. And um, and Mike, once again, I'm so thankful that you take the time to come on our show. And our listeners love you, and we do too. So carry on, just keep it going, and uh, we're just going to keep uh, following you. All right, well, you guys keep tuning in. Mike Marino live on all social media. Let's make America Italian again. Oh, and I'm also running for president in 2020 again. Good. This is going to be my eighth season. <laughs> Good for you, and you should. And you should. Well, all right, Mike, man. Thanks, Mike guys. Marino, you are amazing. You're an amazing guy. And, again, thank you for being on. Good luck with all the shows, and we'll be following you. Come back to us soon. Hey, let me know if you guys want some tickets. I'll make that happen, okay? That'd be great. We'll, I'll let them know. And I appreciate you so much, so thanks, Mike. All right. Have a good night. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Mike Marino, unbelievable. Just a great person, a great artist, a great um, writer, actor, and a lot of fun. <laughs> he's, he's really a funny guy. He's fun to, to hang out with. And uh, so special thanks to Mike Marino. And please, if you're down in uh, the South Jersey area, get over and see the show because you'll really love it. And, and you're going to laugh your brains out because it's so funny. And if you grew up in an Italian-American family like I did and like Mike did, there's a lot of things in there you're going to hear. And you go, oh, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that. that. That was a little too close. So I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, so I want to remind everybody, uh, you're listening to the Johnny Mandolin Show. We're sponsored by Sexton Records. That's C-E-X-T-O-N, Sexton with a C, audiophile jazz 
big band and Italian American music label. Uh, go to sexton.com, C E X T O N dot com, and uh, check it out. Uh, also, I want to remind you on Wednesdays, we have Mr. Larry Luger, unbelievable New York jazz guitar player who hosts the Sexton Records Jazz Hour. And you want to check that out too. That's, I believe, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on Wednesdays. So, uh, by all means, check that out too. Um, we're going to feature a gentleman who I met. Uh, he was a wonderful singer. And I was in Orange County, California, and I heard him sing in the club, and he just really knocked me out. And I, I kept going back and seeing him. And finally, I just said, you know, you should do an album on Sexton Records, and that's Mr. Jack Wood. And Jack said, sure, why not? And he did did a, a, a best-selling album on Sexton Records, and Jack has continued to sing, continued to record. He's made several albums. He's played a lot of really great places, including... Um, some big theaters like up in Salt Lake. He's played New York. He's played uh, all over uh, Los Angeles, Orange County, and that area. Uh, Jack Wood. Jack Wood. His new album's called We Were Lovers. And it features great big band arrangements uh, by Henry Wolking and also Tom Kubis. And those of you West Coast guys know Tom Kubis is a great arranger. He also has done four albums for Sexton Records. So it's all in the family here. We're going to feature Jack's new album, We Were Lovers, with the first tune called Old Devil Moon, Jack Wood. Suddenly, something in your eyes I see Soon began bewitching me It's that old devil moon That you stole from the skies It's that old devil moon in your eyes You and your glance Make this romance too hot to handle Stars in the night, blaze in the light Can't hold a candle to your razzle-dazzle You've got me riding high and wide On a magic carpet ride Full of butterflies inside
at you and suddenly Something in your eyes I see Soon begin bewitching me It's that old devil me That you stole from the skies It's that old devil me in your eyes You and your glance make this romance Too hot to handle in the night blaze in the light can't hold a candle to your razzle dazzle you got me right and high and wide on a magic carpet ride full of butterflies inside what a cry what a crew what a laugh When I think I'm free as a dove Oh, devil moon, deep in your eyes Blinds me with love Jack Wood, Jack Wood on his new album, We Were Lovers. Boy, what a great tune, great cut. Um, really, really great arrangement of the big band. It just sounds so solid. Um Definitely check Jack out on, um, on you know, all the music channels and his website, Jack Wood, W-O-O-D, Jack Wood. Um, brand new album, We Were Lovers. In fact, the next tune we're going to play is actually the title tune of the album, We Were Lovers. Uh, you're seeing the Jack Wood um, from uh, Los Angeles, California. Great um, performer on the Sexton Records jazz label. All right, We Were Lovers, Jack Wood. could forget and we were lovers the moment that we met and we would wander content to wander through the golden summer with nothing to regret Jack Wood from the new album, We Were Lovers, the song, same title, We Were Lovers. Jack Wood, um, excellent musician, really nice guy. I had the good fortune and the um, uh, privilege to sit down with Jack last week and have lunch out in California and um, discuss the new album, which is absolutely wonderful, and uh, you should check it out. Jack Wood Music 
dot com is Jack's website. That's Jack J A C K W O O D Music dot com. That's his website. Check Jack out. He's got some great CDs out. Uh, and on the Sexton label, he has one called Baby Baby All the Time, which is just a great CD. All right, let's hear more of Jack and these great big band arrangements. Beautiful tune called What Are You Doing the Rest of Your Life? A Michelle Legrand tune. Jack Wood. <laughs> Jack Wood, amazing singer. Um, uh, Jack um, plays again all over like um, Los Angeles, uh, Salt Lake City, 
And um, last time he was in New York, he was here doing an album with the great guitar player, and I might mention also a Sexton Records artist, Doug MacDonald. Doug is an amazing West Coast uh, guitar player. And they did an album here in New York with um, Lenore Raphael, and uh, she was on our show before with an interview as well. And uh, so while Jack was here, he went down to um, Arturo's, our favorite restaurant here in New York City, a great pizza place restaurant. They have jazz seven nights a week. And uh, jazz got up, uh, Jack got up with the band, the jazz band, and just sang and tore it up. He was just amazing. He'd, like, like he rehearsed with them for years, but he, they had just met. And he got up and just nailed it. Amazing, amazing singer, amazing musician. All right, let's hear Jack do Our Day Will Come. <laughs> Our day will come And we'll have everything We'll share the joy Falling in love can bring No one can tell me that I'm too young to know I love you so And you love me Our day will come Just wait a while, no tears for us, make love and wear a smile, our dreams are magic because we'll always stay in love. Jack Wood, Our Day Will Come, from the album We Were Lovers. By the way, that unbelievably excellent guitar playing you heard was Doug MacDonald, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, actually, Jack has a nice note in the CD I'd like to read. Jack says, I'm particularly proud of the performances of Doug MacDonald on the guitar and Larry Jackstein on piano, and also delighted to have uh, the two, uh, two-time two Grammy nominee Lenore Raphael and her quartet on, th on the three songs that we re recorded in New York City. Um, so I can tell you that most of this album's recorded live, live musicians, great singing, uh, no messing around. <laughs> and that's why it's so good, and that's why Jack is so good. Um, Jack Wood, We Were Lovers, his new album. Um, we have a little more time here. We're going to hear another song or two. This is off the album, a beautiful tune called Laura. <laughs> Lord. 
Laura is the face in the misty light Footsteps that you hear down the hall The laugh that floats on a summer night That you can never quite recall And you see Laura On the train that is passing through Those eyes, how familiar they seem She gave your very first kiss to you That was Laura But she's only a In the misty light Footsteps That you hear Down the hall The laugh That floats On a summer night That you can never Passing through those eyes, how familiar they seem. She gave your very first kiss to you. That was Laura, but she's only a dream. Jack Wood and Laura, but she's only a dream. Love that tune. That's one of the best tunes <laughs> ever, and it's an absolute, um, absolute wonderful, wonderful album. Jack Wood. Check Jack Wood out because he's amazing. Those of you guys who are in uh, Southern California, go to jackwoodmusic.com. That's his website, and check Jack out and see, um, you know, see where he's at. You can go see him live. The new album, We Were Lovers, Jack Wood. We're going to close the show with a medley 
uh, what is this thing called love and i could write a book the amazing jack wood make sure you check out sexton records c-e-x-t-o-n.com our sponsors and thanks for listening to the johnny mandolin show on city world radio network What is this thing called love? This funny thing called love? Just who can solve its mystery? Why should it make a fool of me? I saw you there one wonderful day. You took my heart and you threw it away. That's why I ask the Lord in heaven above. What is this thing called providing guide dogs for people who are blind or visually impaired, one national organization is taking the lead. The Guide Dog Foundation breeds and trains Labradors and Golden Retrievers to help blind and visually impaired people increase their mobility and independence. The foundation provides transportation to its New York campus, the Guide Dog, a comprehensive training program, and a lifetime of aftercare services, all free of charge. The benefits to training with a guide dog at the Guide Dog Foundation in Smithtown, New York, are many. Among them are small class sizes for personalized attention, a long history of excellence in dog breeding, and a highly skilled professional.